right, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodson. Let's talk today about reducing grain, reducing noise in your photos. There's three different ways I'm going to cover in this tutorial. Uh, one way is kind of okay, one way is pretty good, and another way is really, really good. But I want you to know all three ways because it's just, you know, hey, why not have more tools in your toolbox? Before we jump into it, I'm selling a course over on my website, tutfit.com, all about how to retouch images and a bunch of the advanced techniques that I use to retouch images. If you go and pick it up, that'd be amazing. You help support the website and the channel and all that good stuff. If not, hey, there's plenty of free tutorials. Feel free to go check them all out. Um, you're still awesome in my book. You're just a little bit more awesome if you support the website. There's a little video card uh, that has appeared on this video. You can click that and check it out. So let's talk about reducing noise. Well, first and foremost, um, I'm going to make sure that I'm working with a smart object. Now, this is a camera raw image shot from the top of the Empire State Building using one of the older Canon DSLRs. It's like 4,000 ISO or something, maybe 3,200, I don't know. But you can see a lot of grain, and if I zoom in, I mean, you can really see all of this this grain, this noise. It's, it's pretty intense. So we want to get rid of some of that. We want to lighten it up. We want to loosen it up. But we also want to maintain the detail and the sharpness as much as possible in our foreground objects here. So as I mentioned, this is a smart object. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try the smart sharpen technique. Now you may be saying, what smart sharpen? I don't want to sharpen this and increase the, the detail in my grain. I want to reduce it. Well, if you look here in smart sharpen, I'm just dragging my preview here up to the sky. I can guess I can click out here and see the sky. There is this reduced noise slider. And sure enough, there it is set to zero reduction of the noise. And I can boost it all the way up. I can reduce or increase the sharpness as I, I need. Obviously, the lower the the, uh, sharpening, uh, the sharpening amount, the uh, more noise reduction you have. The more you increase sharpening, the more you're going to still kind of have some noise, but it's going to be like a little weaker and chunkier uh, looking, stuff like that. Uh, so maybe I'll go increase sharpness to like 130 or something like that, or a radius of around one pixel, and just reduce noise at 100%. I'm not even going to go into shadows and highlights. Go ahead and hit OK. It's going to take a second to apply that smart uh, that smart filter. Well, it's already done. And we can see here, if I zoom in, uh, we can check out the sky. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, it doesn't look great. This is probably my least favorite way to reduce noise, but if I shut off the smart filter, there's before, there's after. So it is doing something. All right, I'm going to drag that smart filter to the garbage. Let's talk about the reduce noise filter. Now, there are some photographers that I know of who absolutely hate this filter. Um, I don't really see anything wrong with it if you use it the right way. If you just go ahead and slap lots of filter, noise, reduce noise on your image, you're going to do a lot of damage. Not to mention, there are a lot of cool things you can do with the tone in the image. If you reduce noise and kind of like subtly blur details in a layer, and then like set it to a blend mode of soft light and reduce contrast and things like that, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. We're not going to get into that side of reduce noise. But the reduced noise filter is not as bad as I hear a lot of people talking about it, at least not in my book. So here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to rasterize this layer. So right-click, rasterize layer, and I'm going to duplicate my layer. So I'm going to call this NYC uh, Reduce Noise. And what I'm going to do is go filter, you guessed it, noise. Boom. Reduce noise. Up pops the reduce noise dialog box. Now, this dialog box can give us a nice big preview of what's going on, and we have some options. Well, first of all, we can work in basic or advanced. Advanced basically allows us to work on a per channel basis, which is great, but in this image, there's so much noise, it's not just like we can target the blue channel and get rid of all the noise. If you're looking at your image and you can see specifically a lot of noise in a, in a certain color, um, by all means, go in and target that individual channel. We're just going to roll with overall, though, because there's just a lot of noise here. I'm going to crank the strength up to 10, kind of puts it at max. It reduces the details as much as possible. Um, and I'm not going to turn preserve details up all that high. Um, I don't care about preserving details in this dialog box. We're going to bring details back in just a second. I'm also going to reduce color noise quite a bit. There's not as much color noise in this image, so I'm just going to set that to like 50%. Uh, there is some color noise, um, but again, we, we, we do need some level of grain. We can't just make the image completely soft everywhere. Grain isn't inherently a bad bad thing. Too much grain is a bad thing. Uh, sharpen details, sure. We'll just say sharpen 10, 15%. Something like that is great. Um, also note that you can save a preset. So if you have, you know, 100 images you shot from the top of the Empire State Building or something, and they all need to be, you know, fixed noise-wise, 
you can save a preset for that batch of images and go ahead and just quickly apply it to all of your images here in Photoshop. Uh, let's go ahead and hit OK and it's going to apply our uh, reduce noise filter. So if I zoom in here, you can see on, on this building here, we're, we're losing some detail. It definitely looks a little softer. When we move up into the sky, it's done a pretty nice job of getting rid of kind of that oppressive level of noise, right? You can see, I mean, there's, there's quite a big difference. There is also a difference in the detail in the buildings here in the foreground. So what do we do? Well, the reason that we put this reduced noise filter up on its own layer is so we could blend it with the layer beneath. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, couldn't we have done a smart filter and we could have done blend modes and masking and everything like that on the smart filter? Yes, but we're going to do something a little bit differently. We're going to go layer, layer style, blending options. And I'm going to zoom in over here on this building because I want you to take a good look at this. We're going to use these blend if options. What I want to do is I want to protect the highlights of the underlying layer. What's the underlying layer? Well, the underlying layer is the original image with all of that grain, also with all of the sharpness. Uh, so we want to protect the highlights because especially in this image, I can tell that the bulk of the grain is out here in these really dark pixels uh, where the camera is trying to pick up some kind of detail in the night sky. So if I just say, hey, Photoshop, protect all the bright stuff and leave all of that reduced noise in the dark areas, maybe, just maybe, I can bring back some sharpness. So I'm going to drag this slider over. You can see as I drag over, I'm already getting detail back in the side of this building. Look, there's before and there's after. I mean, look at how much came back in the foreground. In fact, if we move up so we can see more of the sky, you can watch how, well, let me drag the actual slider. There we go. How the sky is very, very soft. And as I drag it over, eventually it sort of pops and all the grain just kind of comes back. You see that? So we want to stop it before it sort of pops and brings all the grain back in the sky, but we want to maintain as much detail in our foreground in the lighter areas as possible. Once we've done that, we can split the handle by holding on the Alt or Option key, and we can further fine tune this and bring back maybe just a little bit of grain in the sky, but a bit more of the sharpness here in the foreground as well. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. What we can do is shut off our noise reduction, turn the noise reduction back on, and you can see it's almost as if we've masked it up here just to the dark areas. There's not much of a change on these buildings in the foreground at all. There's a little bit, but not much. So that's pretty cool. Use a separate layer, reduce noise. Those blend if sliders can be super helpful. All right, I'm going to undo this a bunch of times to get me back to my original smart object. Maybe the best way to reduce noise and grain in your image is simply to enter the Camera Raw Editor. I'm actually going to cancel this because if you don't have a Camera Raw image that you've brought into Photoshop, you can still gain access to the Camera Raw Editor by converting your layer to a smart object and going Camera Raw Filter. So once more, I'm just going to double click on this thumbnail. It's going to bring up my Camera Raw Editor. And the third tab over is the Sharpening or the Detail tab. And in addition to Sharpening, we have Noise Reduction. Check this out. I'm going to zoom in a bit here so we can see what's going on. Uh, this is just our original image. You can see if I increase Sharpening, which I would love to do to bring out even more detail in my foreground, as I do that, uh, the noise in the sky gets worse and worse and worse. One of the things I can do to combat that is reduce the detail in my sharpening. You can see how it kind of like lightened it a little bit. It doesn't sort of proactively reduce the grain and the noise, but it certainly helps cut down on the accentuation of that grain and noise uh, by our sharpening adjustment. Over here we have noise reduction, and this is pretty cool stuff. So we can just reduce the luminance noise overall. You can see it does a really good job. We can boost the detail in the brighter areas of our image by boosting uh, luminance detail. We can also boost luminance contrast. You can see what that's doing down here uh, in our image. So we can boost luminance contrast as well. Uh, we can also reduce color noise. There's not a huge amount of color noise in this image, but there's a little bit. And then also color detail. Typically, the more you increase the detail sliders, the more you're going to get a little bit of that noise back, just as a general rule. Not always the case, but many times is the case. So just keep that in mind as you're working on this. Uh, and then color smoothness. We can increase that a little bit, but again, you don't want to go too high. You know what, actually, if I turn that all the way down to zero, I see a lot more detail here in the building. I don't know if you can see that. See, when I crank it up, it kind of gets soft, and then when I turn it back down, there's noticeably more sharpness in the building. So let's go ahead and just commit this change by hitting OK. And Photoshop is going to prepare the smart object. And what we can do is we can zoom in here to 100%. Uh, maybe zoom in a little bit more and you can see the sky. It still looks chunky, like there's definitely something going on there. Um, 
But, well, I guess we can't really preview it because it's not, we didn't apply the smart filter. This is actually a camera raw image. But if I just hit Command or Control Z to undo, there was all of our grain. And there it is after the camera raw noise reduction. So I think camera raw noise reduction is the best out of those three options. But I really do love that reduce noise option here under filter. And sometimes, in particularly bad cases of noise, you're going to need to combine uh, methods and techniques. So my go-to will be like the one-two of hitting it with the camera raw uh, noise reduction and then coming in, duplicating the layer, applying my reduce noise and then hitting it with the blend if slider and really just constraining that noise to or constraining the noise reduction to wherever the pockets of noise really are. If they're in the highlights, I'll protect the shadowy parts of the image. If they're in the shadows as we have here in this image, I will often protect uh, the highlights of the image so we're just targeting the noise and the grain in the darker parts of the image. So, for all that technical talk about noise and grain and everything else in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. How you doing? Want to do me a favor? Go ahead and hit that little like button. Yeah. Crush it. Smash it. That's right. After that, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe. Hit the little red button there. If you've already done it, great. We're good then, right? Huh? Of course, after you do that, you got to head over to Tutvid.com and sign up for my newsletter. When you sign up, get a little something for it, you know? You're going to get a little uh, guide full of uh, time-saving tips and tricks on how you can use Photoshop, save a lot of time in that application. Of course, go find me on social media too, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. All the links down there in the description. Do it, or you might be sleeping with the fishes.